Nothing is more important than our time in God's word. If you are a Christian, you profess to follow Jesus, then this is absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. It has to be a priority in your each and every day. So what about life? What about the things when we're struggling with the kids and balancing all of the stuff? Maybe you're like me and you have ADHD, your kids have ADHD. How do we balance Bible time? What do we do to get that so important time in God's word every day? even when dealing with all of the stuff. It can be overwhelming. with Heavenly Minded Home and welcome back to our daily videos. I love sharing about all the homey things. So from homemaking to homeschooling, home discipleship to homesteading, all with an eternal heavenly minded perspective. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. This topic is so incredibly important and that would be how to have your time studying scripture when you're distracted. What about when the kids are distracted? What are you, whether you're struggling with ADHD like me and some of our kids, you're busy, you've got a lot going on. How do you get that important time in God's word with all of the distractions, with all of the chaos, with all of the things going on? So these here would be the top five things that I no longer do to try to get this balance back. This time in God's word, even when I'm dealing with my own ADHD, with the kids and what they have going on, with all of the things life throws at us. My husband is a pastor and something that we talk about so often with those in our church is our time in God's word. Yes, we go to church, we go to small group study, we do all of those things, that's wonderful, that's great. But this happens every single day. This is a priority every single day. So when we're distracted, we're dealing with all of the things for the kids and for us, how do we get that Bible study time in? Well, we start by not doing these next five things. Number one, I no longer listen to Christian music. Instead, I like to spend my time listening to sermons. This was so incredibly important. So often I would think, I just don't have time to really dig in and to listen to these things. I'm distracted, I got too much going on, I've got a lot on my plate, whatever it may be. Guess what? When I decided to stop listening to music, especially Christian music, that's a whole different topic. If you guys want to talk more about it, leave me a comment down below, because that's a whole different thing. But I stopped listening to it. And instead, instead of just, you know, little whatever, I said, what if I spend that time listening to solid sermons? So we have Google Nest speakers in our house, and sometimes I will turn a sermon on in there. I love the BBN Bible Broadcast Network radio. They have great sermons that play, and I can just play them through the house. And so me, the kids, we're all just kind of listening to it. It's on in the home instead of maybe music playing. Um, if I have music playing, it's because it's my Hymns of the Homemaker playlist that you guys can get down below. It's just lovely instrumental music to set the tone of our home. But instead of just having music playing, like Christian music or something like that, I just put on a sermon. Sometimes I go ahead and I put my little earbuds in. These ones I love for ADHD. They're just these little loops that you loop on the outside of your ear so I can still hear. Everything sounds good, I can hear the kiddos, but I have a sermon playing in my ear. And I love that so much more than just spending my time with maybe music playing, put a sermon on and get some time studying into God's word through hearing a solid teaching. The second thing I no longer do is I no longer aim for long study sessions really for myself or the kids. Maybe in this season of life for you, that just isn't working. And so trying to have these like long, deep, just sessions of study, you keep running into issues. You're distracted, you can't focus, you, the kids aren't focusing, they're distracting you, you know, whatever it may be, and you're just continually struggling with trying to dig in and trying to do what you think you should be doing. And so when I just stopped aiming for those long study sessions, I really started seeing greater fruit. So now for me, it's when I have a quiet moment. 
it's when the kids are maybe playing in the pool so I'll sit down on the swing next to the pool and kind of watch them play and I'll read my Bible or put that earbud on so that way I can listen to a sermon. For the kiddos, they're taking the Bible classes in the Heavenly Minded Homeschool Academy. You guys can come and sign up. We've got September and October classes going up. The link is down in the description. They've got their time there. We do our family Bible curriculum. Heavenly Minded Homeschool, we have a family Bible curriculum that we put out. You all are welcome to come get it if you would like to join us. We're studying through scripture from Genesis to Revelation, book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We do that while we're gathered at the table over breakfast. It doesn't have to be this like huge task, this huge thing. It's while we all come together every morning and eat, we sit down and we read and discuss and do the little fun trivia questions and really just have this great time digging in. And so as soon as I kind of had that mental shift of it doesn't have to be this big, long, you know, super academic thing. It's the little moments that we have and seizing them and really just digging in and all of the opportunities that I can versus trying to expect a deep focus and no distractions and, you know, these really, really long study sessions. Thing I no longer do is I no longer think that my Bible study time has to come from me reading my Bible. Hear me out. I can get really distracted sitting down and having time to really, even if it's a short window of time, to just be reading my Bible. I get distracted. My mind kind of bounces all over the place. I get interrupted 700,000 times. I don't want my kids to feel like an interruption because they're not. They're my greatest blessing. The kids sometimes, I want them to sit down and spend more time reading their Bible, but then they're getting distracted. We have a couple tips that we implement here. I'm going to share them with y'all today. One would be, especially for us ADHDers, a good set of sound blocking headphones. These are like, you get them, I'll link them down below. If you're, you know, protective earwear for working with, you know, loud things, chainsaws, things like that, put these on, you block out the sound. If I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to be reading or trying to focus, these here, big help. Again, these trusty ear pods. I love these, again, so much. You just link, I can still hear everybody. I will put these in and I will listen. I have the Bible app on my phone and I frequently listen to the entire Bible in a one month period. It's one of my most favorite things to do. We've done series and challenges here in the HMH Collective. That's our membership group where we have different studies and things. And we've done that quite a few times so far. It's so much fun, but I love being able to just pop on that earbud. I can still hear kids if something happens or I need to attend to something, but I listen to the Bible. It would be really difficult for me to sit down and read through the Bible every single month. I would really struggle. That would be very difficult for me. I listen to it nearly every month and I love it. I'm amazed at the things that I am soaking in listening to it versus reading. Sometimes I do both. Sometimes I have my Bible pulled out and I do that. And I don't think it should be one or the other. I think they complement each other. But when I'm just going about my cleaning, my homemaking, whatever my daily task is, I will most often listen to my Bible through the app. The fourth thing I no longer do is I no longer read Bible translations that are frustrating, that are difficult. This is a huge topic and I know people get really, really wonky with this. So I want to be very careful with my words. And if you have questions about translation specifically, again, leave me a comment down below. Maybe put a little Bible emoji next to it. We do Q and A sessions every single week and I love answering your guys' questions in there so we can really thoroughly dig into it. But the most important Bible translation that you can be reading is the one that you can truly understand. There's different reasons for different translations. And again, that's a whole nother topic that we can dig into if you guys are interested. But especially when you're dealing with getting distracted, with losing focus, with whatever it might be that you're dealing with, if you're reading something or even listening to something that you're just not connecting with, that's going to make it even more distracting. You're going to be getting even less out of that. And that's kind of a big deal. We don't want to just do this for the sake of doing it. We want to do it because we want to be learning. We want to be discipled. And for me, what I have really been loving lately 
is my Spiral Bible. This thing is amazing, I think especially for those of us with ADHD, but I love this. I have the World English Bible, and I'm loving this translation. It is a very solid, very easy to read translation. Of course, spiral bound, so that makes note taking and marking and everything so wonderful. You've got all the text here, plenty of space for notes, which I love, so I don't have to get distracted with having a bunch of journals and a bunch of things because I can do all of it right here in my super pretty Spiral Bible. I will say, you guys, if you are interested in checking out Spiral Bible, I have a link down below. You guys can do use my link that's down there. Save yourself a little bonus gift there so that way you're getting a little bit of a savings here and trying out an amazing amazing product. I am totally loving the Spiral Bible. This for my personal Bible time has been wonderful. I love putting my earbud in and listening when I'm just doing my stuff, but when I'm sitting down and I'm studying or I'm listening to a sermon and I want to have scripture there in front of me, my Spiral Bible has definitely been my go-to lately. Now for the kids, we use the New Living Translation, which we love. They, it's so wonderful for the kids. It's what we use for the family Bible curriculum. You can use what's best for you, but that is what we use. We also have things like the Action Bible for the kids. So those, especially younger ones or kids that are very visual and need something there to help them get through and understand and kind of imagine what it is that they're reading. We have some kids that have had some struggles with that. The Action Bible is a great resource for that. So no longer do I even mess with translations that frustrate me. Just the, the wording and the way they do it. For me, I'm not a KJV fan. I know that's going to get me lots of angry comments. I am so sorry, but I'm not a KJV fan. Um, for me, the NASB, I just, I don't know. It's a great translation. It's very, very solid, but it just kind of boggles my noggle. Like it's just not my go-to for me. I love this World English Bible. We love the NLT. We love the ESV. Um, there's some great, great, great translations out there. So find one that works well for you and for your kiddos so you're not adding to the frustration and the distraction while you're trying to read. Fifth thing, friends, that I no longer do when it comes to my time in the Word, my time in discipleship, is I no longer worry about the perfect setup. Because spoiler alert, it doesn't exist. It just, that's, that's not something that's true. God's word is the foundation to our life. It's not just the setup for the perfect Instagram photo. I want my time to be rock solid. I want it to be integrated in every single day of my life. I want to be pulling out my Bible and listening to a sermon, listening to scripture, singing hymns of praise to the Lord all the time. And so I don't want to get hung up on the perfect journal, the perfect setup, that perfect time free of all distraction where I can be completely focused like a scholar. That's wonderful, that's great. And if you have that availability, praise God, that's amazing, enjoy it. When you're a mama of four kiddos and you're trying to keep a home and you're homesteading and you're homeschooling and you're in ministry full time and your husband's pastoring and he's teaching and all of the other things you have going on, for some of us, that just doesn't work let alone my ADHD kind of gets me all over the map. And so I'm usually working hard just to keep myself in line, let alone those in my house that are usually needing a little assistance as well. And so letting go of that mindset that it has to be perfect. It has to look like this. Everything has to be smooth and beautiful and just, you know, absolutely lovely and staged isn't reality and that's okay. It's okay if your time looks messy. It's okay if it looks like an earbud in, a sermon playing, you know, sitting down with your spiral Bible. I'm usually sitting here at the table while the kids are playing with slime and doing stuff and sometimes stuff gets spilt and things happen, but that's okay because we're getting our time in. And more importantly, I'm showing my children that my relationship with the Lord is my number one priority. And them seeing that, that through the messes and the spills and them being in the pool and me sitting by their side and kind of laughing with them while I read something by them seeing that that's really walking the walk and I want them to see just how important it is to me as I train them up to know the importance for themselves as well so the fifth thing that I'm no longer doing is thinking it has to all be perfect in order for it to be a great time a great session studying God's Word
So friends, those would be the top five things that I no longer do when it comes to my Bible time. My time in God's word may look a little bit different and that's okay. All of ours can look a little bit different. What's important is that we're digging in. We are listening to solid teachers. We have a great pastor shepherd. We are digging in and understanding the most important thing we possibly can as we conform to the truth in this life. If you guys have questions, you'd need anything, you are all welcome to come and join us. We share all of our services online and everything that we do. Our ministry, AMP Home Ministry, started because there were so many people we ran into here in YouTube that didn't have a solid church near them. Or maybe they had children with special needs and it didn't really work for them to go to the churches in their area. We have people in our church that are homebound and can't get to a local congregation. And then we have many that have a great, amazing local congregation and then they just study extra with us. It's a wonderful space and you guys are all welcome to come and join us if it could be something that would be a blessing to you and your family. So I will link that down below if you guys want to check that out. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with some extra videos that I think you guys are going to enjoy as you dig in a little bit deeper to how important it is to really study and understand God's word for ourselves and for our children. Be sure to check out those links in the description. And again, use that special code for Spiral Bible if you want to check out one of their amazing Bibles for yourselves and save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks to our channel and our collaboration with Spiral Bible. So I'm going to let you guys go watch that and I will see you right back here tomorrow.